Let's be crystal clear about this. Putin killed Navalny. The recent demise of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny within the confines of a prison has sent shockwaves across the globe, prompting widespread condemnation and allegations of foul play. As the world grapples with the news of Navalny's tragic passing, the spotlight has once again turned to the contentious relationship between Russia and the West. Former ambassador to Russia Michael McFaul has echoed President Biden's assertion, pointing fingers at Vladimir Putin's regime for Navalny's demise. Months earlier, when Putin was asked if he killed Navalny, this was his response. <laughs> Over my tenure, I've gotten used to attacks from all kinds of angles. Putin's denial. During his annual news conference, President Vladimir V. Putin of Russia dismissed allegations linking him to the near-fatal poisoning of his primary political adversary, Alexei A. Navalny, with a dismissive laugh. Putin remarked that if Russian operatives had indeed intended to eliminate Navalny, they would have succeeded in doing so. However, in a surprising turn, Putin acknowledged that Russian intelligence had been surveilling Navalny's movements within the country. The incident involving Navalny, a prominent 44-year-old opposition figure known for his significant online following, unfolded in August when he was poisoned with a potent military-grade nerve agent while traveling through Siberia. Despite falling critically ill during a commercial flight, Navalny's life was saved due to the swift actions of the pilot's emergency landing and the timely response of ambulance personnel upon landing. Putin, while addressing journalists for hours during the conference, shifted blame towards American intelligence, alleging their involvement in orchestrating the outcry surrounding Navalny's poisoning. He dismissed findings from an international investigator report implicating Russian intelligence, labeling it as American-engineered propaganda. Referring to Navalny as this patient in the Berlin clinic, Putin insinuated that American intelligence agencies were supporting him, justifying Russian surveillance on Navalny. However, he vehemently denied any involvement in or motive for poisoning Navalny, reiterating that the blame laid elsewhere. Putin's statements during the highly publicized event underscored the Kremlin's defensive stance in light of mounting evidence implicating the Russian state in the assassination attempt on Navalny. It also highlighted Putin's familiar tactic of deflecting responsibility by implicating foreign entities, particularly the United States. Navalny responded to Putin's remarks on Facebook, asserting that the evidence against the Russian government was undeniable, likening Putin's comments to a tacit admission of guilt. In September, German military scientists determined that Navalny had been poisoned with a nerve agent from the Russian-made Novichok family, a conclusion corroborated by laboratories in France, Sweden, and the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, an international watchdog. The poisoning of Alexei Navalny was a turning point in his political career, but the events that followed only added to the shocking narrative surrounding his case. After recovering from the poisoning, Navalny made a bold decision to return to Russia, defying the risks and the looming threat of arrest. He believed that his mission to expose corruption and fight for justice was far from over, and he was determined to continue his work on Russian soil. However, as soon as Navalny landed at Moscow's Sheremetyevo airport on January 17, 2021, he was immediately detained by Russian authorities. The arrest was met with widespread condemnation, with many viewing it as a blatant attempt to silence a prominent opposition figure. Navalny's arrest sparked a wave of protests across Russia, with thousands taking to the streets to demand his release and denounce the government's actions. The demonstrations were met with a heavy-handed response from the authorities, leading to clashes between protesters and the police. In a swift and controversial trial, Navalny was convicted of violating the terms of his probation from a previous case and sentenced to two and a half years in prison. The ruling was widely criticized as politically motivated, aimed at silencing Navalny and stifling dissent. Navalny was sent to Penal Colony No. 2 in Pokrov, a notorious prison known for its harsh conditions. His imprisonment sparked international outrage, with world leaders, human rights organizations, and ordinary citizens calling for his immediate release. In protest against the conditions and lack of medical care in prison, Navalny embarked on a hunger strike, putting his own health at risk. His hunger strike drew attention to the mistreatment of prisoners in Russia and further intensified the global spotlight. On his case, the international community responded swiftly to Navalny's arrest and imprisonment. Several countries imposed sanctions on Russian officials believed to be involved in his poisoning and subsequent persecution. These measures aimed to hold the Russian government accountable for its actions and put pressure on Putin's regime. Throughout this ordeal, Putin and his government have consistently denied any involvement in Navalny's poisoning and dismissed the accusations as baseless. 
Putin has maintained that Navalny's arrest and imprisonment are purely legal matters and not politically motivated. Despite the challenges and the risks, Navalny's supporters have remained steadfast in their fight for justice. Protests continue to erupt across Russia, with ordinary citizens demanding accountability and an end to the government's repression. Navalny's team, the Anti-Corruption Foundation, has also continued its work, exposing corruption and advocating for change. They have vowed to carry on Navalny's mission, ensuring that his voice is not silenced, even from behind bars. Vladimir Putin's trajectory to becoming one of the world's most powerful leaders began in the relatively humble surroundings of Leningrad, now St. Petersburg, Russia, where he was born in 1952. Raised in a working-class family, Putin experienced the hardships of post-World War II Soviet society firsthand. His father served in the Soviet Navy, instilling in Putin a sense of patriotism and discipline from an early age. After studying law at Leningrad State University, Putin joined the KGB, the notorious Soviet intelligence agency, where he rose through the ranks during the waning years of the Cold War. His service in East Germany during the 1980s provided him with valuable experience in espionage and foreign affairs, shaping his world view and leadership style. With the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, Putin transitioned into politics, serving in various roles within the Russian government before catching the eye of President Boris Yeltsin, who appointed him prime minister in 1999. Putin's meteoric rise to power culminated in his election as president later that year, a position he would hold for the next eight years before stepping aside to become prime minister under his hand-picked successor, Dmitry Medvedev. However, Putin remained the de facto leader of Russia, wielding considerable influence behind the scenes. In 2012, he returned to the presidency for a third term, and in 2018, he was re-elected for another six-year term, solidifying his grip on power and cementing his status as one of the most dominant figures in modern Russian history. Throughout his tenure, Putin has cultivated an image of strength and stability, appealing to Russian nationalist sentiment, while cracking down on dissent and consolidating control over the country's political and economic institutions. His authoritarian rule has drawn condemnation from human rights groups and Western governments, but Putin's popularity at home remains strong, buoyed by a combination of state-controlled media, economic stability, and nationalist rhetoric. Vladimir Putin's tenure as Russia's paramount leader has been marked by a disturbing pattern of violence and repression, both domestically and abroad. Since ascending to power in 1999, first as prime minister and later as president, Putin has exhibited a penchant for authoritarianism, consolidating control over various aspects of Russian society while quashing dissent and opposition. His regime has been characterized by a series of high-profile cases involving the suppression of political opponents, journalists, and activists who dared to challenge his authority. The list of victims includes Boris Nemtsov, a prominent opposition figure who was assassinated in 2015, just steps away from the Kremlin, and Anna Politkovskaya, an investigative journalist known for her critical reporting on the Chechen conflict who was murdered in 2006. These brazen acts of violence, coupled with the suspicious deaths and mysterious disappearances of other critics of the regime, have fostered a climate of fear and intimidation in Russia, where speaking out against the government can have deadly consequences. Beyond its borders, Putin's regime has been implicated in a range of a aggressive and destabilizing activities, from the annexation of Crimea in 2014 to its support for separatist rebels in eastern Ukraine and its military intervention in Syria. The poisoning of former Russian intelligence officer Sergei Skripal and his daughter in the UK in 2018, using a nerve agent believed to be of Russian origin, further underscored Putin's willingness to resort to violence to eliminate perceived threats, even on foreign soil. Under Putin's leadership, Russia has become increasingly isolated on the world stage, viewed with suspicion by Western democracies for its blatant disregard for human rights and international norms. Despite facing mounting criticism and sanctions from the international community, Putin has shown no signs of relenting in his authoritarian tactics, signaling a troubling future for Russia and its people under his iron-fisted rule. The first to Russia, where top opposition figure Alexei Navalny is reported dead this evening. The Opposition Alexei Navalny, widely regarded as the most significant challenger to Russian President Vladimir Putin within the country, tragically passed away following an episode of unconsciousness during a stroll at the Polar Wolf Arctic Penal Facility, where he was incarcerated serving a 30-year prison term, as announced by authorities. Navalny's untimely demise, at the age of 47 and a former legal practitioner, represents a significant loss for the diverse Russian opposition, leaving them without their most prominent figurehead as Putin solidifies his 
position ahead of an upcoming election, potentially extending the former KGB operative's tenure until at least 2030. Navalny's journey is one of courage, determination, and unwavering commitment to fighting corruption within the Russian government. Born on June 4, 1976, in Butin, Russia, Navalny grew up in a country grappling with political and economic turmoil. He studied law at the Russian State Law Academy and later obtained a master's degree in securities and exchanges law from Yale University. Navalny's education laid the foundation for his future endeavors as an anti-corruption activist. Navalny rose to prominence in the late 2000s through his popular blog, which exposed corruption and embezzlement within the Russian government and state-owned companies. His fearless approach and sharp wit earned him a massive following, with thousands of Russians rallying behind his cause. In 2011, Navalny played a pivotal role in the anti-government protests that swept across Russia. He fearlessly took to the streets, demanding transparency and accountability from those in power. Navalny's charisma and ability to mobilize the masses made him a force to be reckoned with. In 2013, Navalny announced his candidacy for the position of mayor of Moscow. Despite facing numerous obstacles and a heavily biased political landscape, he managed to secure an impressive 27% of the vote, finishing second in the race. This achievement solidified his status as a prominent opposition figure in Russia. However, Navalny's political journey was not without its challenges. He faced numerous arrests and legal battles, often on trumped-up charges as the Russian government sought to silence his voice. But Navalny refused to back down, becoming a symbol of resilience and defiance in the face of adversity. City. Navalny's popularity continued to grow, fueled by his relentless pursuit of justice and his unwavering commitment to exposing corruption. He launched the Anti-Corruption Foundation, an organization dedicated to investigating and uncovering the illicit activities of Russian officials. In 2017, Alexei Navalny, undeterred by the Kremlin's attempts to stifle opposition, boldly announced his candidacy for the presidency of Russia, posing a direct challenge to Vladimir Putin's entrenched authority. Despite Navalny's widespread popularity and growing support base, the Russian government swiftly moved to disqualify him from the race, citing a previous criminal conviction widely regarded as politically motivated. However, Navalny's aspirations for political change persisted, serving as a rallying point for those disillusioned with Putin's regime and its grip on power. Navalny's influence transcended the confines of Russian borders, gaining traction on the global stage through his relentless crusade against corruption and abuse of power. His investigative reports, most notably the expose on the opulent Putin's palace, exposed the extravagant lifestyles of Russia's elite and garnered widespread attention, further solidifying Navalny's reputation as a formidable adversary to the Kremlin. Then, in August 2020, Navalny's life was thrust into perilous uncertainty. While en route from Siberia to Moscow, he suddenly fell critically ill, succumbing to symptoms indicative of poisoning. Subsequent investigations revealed that Navalny had been targeted with a nerve agent known as Novichok, a deadly substance with origins traced back to the Soviet era. Navalny's poisoning reverberated across the globe, igniting a a firestorm of outrage and condemnation directed at the Russian government. His emergency evacuation to Germany for urgent medical treatment marked a pivotal moment in the saga, where Navalny's resilience and tenacity became emblematic of the struggle against authoritarianism. Miraculously, Navalny defied the odds, undergoing a remarkable recovery that captured the world's attention and inspired hope amidst adversity. The brazen attack on Navalny not only underscored the dangers faced by those who dared to challenge the status quo in Russia, but also intensified scrutiny on Putin's regime, prompting renewed scrutiny and condemnation from the international community. The poisoning of Navalny served as a stark reminder of the lengths to which the Kremlin would go to silence dissent and maintain its grip on power, sparking renewed calls for accountability and justice on a global scale. Despite being imprisoned, Alexei Navalny's voice continues to resonate, reaching far beyond the confines of his jail cell. In the interview, Navalny spoke candidly about his arrest and the conditions he faces in prison. He described the harsh reality of life behind bars, highlighting the overcrowded cells, lack of medical care, and the constant surveillance by prison authorities. Navalny's resilience and determination were evident as he discussed his unwavering commitment to fighting corruption and seeking justice. He emphasized that his arrest and imprisonment were not just about him, but about the larger struggle for democracy and human rights in Russia. Navalny did not shy away from directly accusing Putin of orchestrating his poisoning and subsequent persecution. He presented evidence and detailed the alleged involvement of Russian security forces in carrying out the attack. Navalny's
these accusations sent shockwaves through the international community, further fueling the narrative that Putin was involved in his poisoning. The interview garnered significant attention from international media outlets, amplifying Navalny's message and exposing the realities of Putin's regime. Journalists and human rights organizations around the world rallied behind Navalny, demanding his release and calling for justice. In response to Navalny's accusations, Putin and his government continued to deny any involvement. They dismissed Navalny's claims as baseless and part of a Western-led campaign to undermine Russia's reputation on the global stage. Putin maintained that Navalny's arrest and imprisonment were lawful and unrelated to politics. Navalny's interview from jail galvanized his supporters, who took to the streets once again, demanding his release and denouncing the government's actions. The protests grew in size and intensity, with ordinary citizens bravely challenging the authorities and risking their own safety to stand up for justice. Despite being imprisoned, Navalny's team at the Anti-Corruption Foundation continued their investigations into corruption within the Russian government. They released damning reports exposing the lavish lifestyles of high-ranking officials and their alleged involvement in embezzlement and bribery. The international community maintained pressure on Russia, with world leaders, human rights organizations, and ordinary citizens demanding Navalny's release and condemning the government's actions. Sanctions were imposed, targeting individuals and entities believed to be involved in the persecution of Navalny. In a powerful message to his supporters, Navalny expressed gratitude for their unwavering support and urged them to continue the fight for justice and democracy. He emphasized that his case was not just about him, but about the future of Russia and the rights of its citizens. Navalny's family, particularly his wife Yulia Navalnaya, has played an integral and tireless role in the relentless campaign for his release and the broader cause of justice and democracy in Russia. Yulia Navalnaya has emerged as a steadfast and influential advocate, fearlessly confronting the oppressive tactics employed by the Russian government to stifle dissent and curb basic freedoms. Despite the inherent risks and constant pressure from authorities, Navalnaya has remained undeterred, boldly speaking out against the injustices perpetrated by the Kremlin and tirelessly championing her husband's cause on both domestic and international national platforms. Yulia Navalnaya's activism extends far beyond the confines of her personal struggles as she passionately raises awareness about the plight of political prisoners in Russia, including Alexei Navalny himself. Through her unwavering commitment and courageous efforts, Navalnaya has become a beacon of hope and resistance against authoritarianism, rallying support from within Russia and garnering attention on the global stage. In the face of adversity and intimidation, demanding justice, accountability and the restoration of democratic principles, her calls for international solidarity have resonated with leaders and activists worldwide as she urges foreign governments to exert pressure on Russia to respect human rights and uphold the rule of law. Yulia Navalnaya Navalnaya's remarkable resilience and unwavering dedication to the cause of justice serve as an inspiration to countless individuals, galvanizing a movement for change and fostering hope for a more democratic and inclusive future in Russia. Despite the challenges ahead, Navalnaya's unwavering resolve reaffirms the belief that even in the face of oppression, the pursuit of freedom and justice will ultimately prevail. Biden did not mince words in calling out who he believes is responsible for Navalny's death. Make no mistake, Putin is responsible for Navalny's death. The reactions. President Biden took a strong stance on the matter. He publicly stated that there was no doubt that Vladimir Putin was responsible for Navalny's death. Biden condemned the Kremlin for its actions and vowed to take action against Russia. The US government is currently considering a range of options to punish Russia for its role in Navalny's death. Throughout this ordeal, Putin and his government have consistently denied any involvement in Navalny's poisoning and dismissed the accusations as baseless. Putin has maintained that Navalny's arrest and imprisonment are purely legal matters and not politically motivated. Despite the challenges and the risks, Navalny's supporters have remained steadfast in their fight for justice. Protests continue to erupt across Russia, with ordinary citizens demanding accountability and an end to the government's repression. Navalny's team, the Anti-Corruption Foundation, has also continued its work, exposing corruption and advocating for change. They have vowed to carry on Navalny's mission, ensuring that his voice is not silenced, even from behind bars. The arrest and imprisonment of Alexei Navalny have sent shockwaves through the international community, shining a spotlight on the state of democracy and human rights in Russia. As the world watches, the question 
question remains, will justice prevail, or will Navalny's case be yet another example of the government's iron grip on power? The relationship between Russia and the United States has been characterized by a complex interplay of cooperation, competition, and conflict, spanning decades of geopolitical maneuvering and ideological rivalry. Emerging from the ashes of World War II, the Cold War rivalry between the two superpowers defined much of the 20th century as both nations vied for global supremacy and sought to spread their respective spheres of influence. The dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991 heralded a new era in Russo-American relations, marked initially by cautious optimism and efforts at cooperation. However, tensions resurfaced in the post-Cold War landscape as Russia grappled with its diminished status and sought to reassert its influence on the world stage. Disputes over NATO expansion, missile defense systems, and human rights issues have fueled mutual distrust and animosity, exacerbating existing fault lines and hindering efforts at diplomatic reconciliation. The annexation of Crimea by Russia in 2014 and its subsequent support for separatist rebels in eastern Ukraine further strained relations, leading to a cycle of economic sanctions and diplomatic isolation. Meanwhile, allegations of Russian interference in the 2016 U.S. presidential election and ongoing cyber attacks targeting American infrastructure have deepened suspicions and prompted calls for a tougher stance against Moscow. Despite occasional attempts at dialogue and cooperation on issues of mutual interest such as arms control and counter-terrorism, the relationship between Russia and the U.S. remains fraught with geopolitical rivalries and ideological differences underscoring the enduring complexities of global power dynamics in the 21st century. The reactions to the tragic death of Alexei Navalny reverberated across the globe, reflecting a mix of shock, condemnation, and calls for accountability. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres minced no words in attributing Navalny's demise directly to Russian President Vladimir Putin, describing Navalny as yet another victim in a long line of casualties under Putin's regime. Guterres demanded justice and accountability, urging for a comprehensive investigation into the circumstances surrounding Navalny's death. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese echoed these sentiments, mourning Navalny's passing as a loss for democracy and condemning the treatment he endured. Australian Foreign Minister Penny Wong held the Russian government solely responsible for Navalny's fate, emphasizing his heroic opposition to Putin's repressive regime and expressing solidarity with the people of Russia in their struggle for freedom. UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, Alice Edwards, highlighted the urgent need for an investigation into the credible allegations of torture against Navalny lamenting the Kremlin's blatant disregard for human life and the rule of law. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak hailed Navalny as a fierce advocate for Russian democracy, while Swedish Prime Minister Ulf Kristersson squarely pinned responsibility for Navalny's death on the Russian authorities, particularly Putin himself. EU Council President Charles Michel and European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, along with EU Foreign Policy Chief Joseph Borrell, held Putin's regime accountable for Navalny's demise, vowing to spare no efforts in seeking justice and demanding Russia adhere to international norms and standards. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg stressed the need for a thorough investigation to establish the facts surrounding Navalny's death, while Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte mourned Navalny's tragic end, attributing it to his fight for democratic values against corruption. Latvian President Edgar Zrinkovics underscored the brutality of Navalny's murder, emphasizing the true nature of Russia's current regime under Putin and calling for solidarity with the Russian people in their quest for freedom and justice. Czech Foreign Minister Jan Lipavsky condemned Russia as a violent state that silences those who dare to dream of a better future, drawing parallels between Navalny's fate and that of other slain dissidents like Boris Nemtsov, and urging the international community to stand firm against tyranny and oppression. Republican U.S. presidential contender Nikki Haley denounced President Trump's alignment with Putin, highlighting Putin's record of silencing political opponents and holding American journalists hostage, emphasizing the imperative of recognizing the true nature of Putin's regime and advocating for a firm stance against Russian aggression. These reactions collectively underscored the global outcry over Navalny's death, with leaders and officials from around the world demanding accountability and justice for his untimely demise, while also exposing the deepening rifts in Russo-American relations and the broader geopolitical landscape and the urgent need Need for concerted international action to address authoritarianism and uphold democratic values. Many believe that the untimely death of Alexei Navalny marks a somber moment not only for Russia but for advocates of free speech and democracy worldwide. 
Navalny's courageous stance against the oppressive regime of Vladimir Putin symbolized the struggle for political freedom and human rights in Russia, inspiring millions both within the country and abroad. His relentless efforts to expose corruption and challenge the authoritarian grip of the Kremlin served as a beacon of hope for those fighting against tyranny and oppression. However, Navalny's tragic demise at the hands of the Russian government underscores the grave dangers faced by individuals who dare to speak out against authoritarian regimes. His poisoning and subsequent death serve as a stark reminder of the lengths to which autocratic leaders will go to silence dissent and maintain their hold on power. Moreover, Navalny's passing represents a significant blow to the prospects of free speech and democracy in Russia, as his absence leaves a void in the country's opposition movement and emboldens the forces of repression. In the broader context, Navalny's death serves as a wake-up call for the international community, highlighting the urgent need to defend and protect the fundamental rights of free speech and expression. It underscores the importance of holding authoritarian regimes accountable for their actions and standing in solidarity with those who continue to fight for liberty and justice. Navalny's legacy as a champion of free speech will endure, serving as a reminder of the ongoing struggle for democracy and human rights in an increasingly turbulent world. The implications of Navalny's death extend far beyond the borders of Russia, reverberating throughout the global community and sparking renewed concerns about the state of free speech and democracy worldwide. His assassination sends a chilling message to activists, journalists and dissidents around the world, underscoring the risks associated with challenging authoritarian rule and exposing corruption. Navalny's fate serves as a stark reminder of the precariousness of free speech in many parts of the world, where individuals who dare to speak out against injustice are often met with violence, persecution, and even death. Moreover, Navalny's death represents a setback for the global struggle for democracy as it emboldens autocratic leaders and undermines efforts to promote freedom and human rights. In the face of growing authoritarianism and repression, the international community must redouble its efforts to defend and protect free speech, ensuring that individuals are able to express themselves without fear of retaliation or persecution. This requires holding repressive regimes accountable for their actions, supporting civil society organizations organizations and independent media and justice. Navalny's death serves as a stark reminder of the ongoing battle for democracy and human rights in an increasingly uncertain world, underscoring the importance of remaining vigilant and steadfast in the face of adversity. We have heard their words, but we are yet to see what actions the rest of the world will take against Russia in response to Navalny's death. That brings us to the end of this video. For more videos like this, click on the cards on your screen.